this goes deep, y'all. All right. What I want to do is I want to go to John 1, 1 first to establish what the Bible says about who the word is. And then when we establish who the word is, and we know when we talk about Savior, we're talking about Jesus Christ. I want you to hear who Jesus Christ really is. For some of you who think he's a prophet, here we go. John 1, starting from verse 1 to 14, because this paints the picture so you get a clear idea. This is the foundation to this message. And then we're going to go to Luke chapter 10. I want you to go there with me next. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Now, did you hear what I said? In the beginning was the word and the word was with God. And this is in the beginning now. And the word was God. The word is capitalized, which means Jesus Christ. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. In other words, the darkness didn't get the light. The darkness didn't understand what was happening with the light. What the heck is that? It did not compute. All right. Verse six, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of that light that all men through him might believe. He was not the light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the light, the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world and the world was made by him and the world knew it not. He came unto his own and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believed on his name, Jesus, which was born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh. In other words, one about man and woman getting it on. No, nor of the will of man, but of God. The word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Do you hear that? The word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory of, of the only begotten of the father, full of grace and truth. So verse 18, no man has seen God at any time. The only begotten son, which is in the bosom of the father, he hath declared him. So in every way, every shape and form, when Jesus came to this earth, he represented who God was. He what he is God. And he came in the form of flesh so that we could see God. That's the only way we would be able to see God was to see Jesus, how he operated in the flesh, his character, his words, his power, his authority over the demonic realm. And he is all power and all authority over everything in space, on earth, and under the earth. So don't think that when you worship the devil, you worship him the powerful one. No, you're not. No, you're not. He's no more than a bellhop or a trained dog to Jesus Christ, because Jesus Christ is the one who says yea or nay in whatever little things the devil wants to do. He still has to get God's permission. Remember that. So if God allows the devil to attack you, if God allows the devil to do anything to you, guess what? It's still going to work out for your good. But you have to go through it with the right attitude. You have to go through it believing in your Savior. Because it's your Savior that's going to get you through. Not your wits, not your charm, not your whatever is going to be your Savior. So your belief has to be in the one with the true authority in the whole situation. And no matter what trials we go through, he will make a way of escape. Depending on who you believe. In. All right. Now let's go to Luke chapter 10 real quick. Luke chapter 10. Ooh, I'm trying to rush for the sake of time. <laughs> All right. Now the reason we're going to Luke chapter 10 
It's because when I was going through the dictionary, God had me go through a definition series. And what I want you to see is when God talks about Savior, there's a definition for Savior. But I want to go to the thesaurus. It's quicker. You get alternate words for it. Savior means rescuer. Savior means liberator. Savior means deliverer, emancipator, champion, knight in shining armor, friend in need, good Samaritan, salvation. Let's go through this just a little bit, just a little bit, so you can kind of chomp on it a bit. Jesus rescues us. A rescuer is one who saves another from a dangerous or difficult situation. Jesus does that for us hourly, not just daily, hourly. He saves us from danger seen and unseen. You don't understand what you have when you have Jesus as a savior. There are times, for example, let me tell you this real quick. When I was walking down the street one night, some of you have heard this story, so I'm just going to brush over it. You want to hear the whole thing, you got to go to the video. I'm walking down the street and a voice yells at me and says, cross over to the other side. By the third time, it's yelling, cross over to the other side now. And I, it, it, I mean, the yell is what got me to moving. When I look to my left, this is at nighttime, I see a dog glaring at me. I would have been minced me had I ignored that voice. God rescued me from a dangerous situation. And you wonder why we walk with him. Why we worship Jesus Christ. Why we worship all that's God. You wonder, you have no idea the benefits of walking with the Lord. Moving right along. Let's go from rescuer and let's go back to savior. Now, another word that means almost the same thing is liberator. Do you know he will release you from things that have you bound up, locked up, tied up in knots. He will release all that pressure. You don't even realize you don't have to live a life of pressure. You don't have to live a life under strain and agony and frustration. You don't have to go through that. Why? Because Jesus is our liberator, y'all. Call on him when you're going through hassle. Call on him when you feel oppressed. Call on his name when you feel like you're under attack. What are you doing trying to bear up under it? No, Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Not heavy, y'all. Not heavy. You got that heavy spirit on you? Go to Jesus. He is our savior, our rescuer, our liberator. And now we're moving to the word deliverer. Some of you can't quit smoking. Some of y'all can't quit arguing, fuming, fussing, fighting, yelling, cussing, going through changes, knocking people upside the head. You have a total, you're totally out of control with your anger. You hurt the people you love. You don't understand why. You're abusive. You're mean spirited. You're cruel. You got a nasty disposition. Do you realize Jesus can deliver you from that? You don't have to live like that for the rest of your life. I don't care how badly you were abused. I don't care what a dysfunctional family you may have come up under. I don't care how many hurts, cuts, and wounds you have not gotten over yet. Guess what? Jesus can get you over that hump. Every single one of them. Every single one. And you don't have to live your life flinching and reacting, flinching and kicking, flinching and punching, flinching and cussing, flinching and fighting. You don't have to go through that. Because that's the only reason you're going through it, because you're flinching. That's why. 
All right, moving right along. So we've got rescue, liberator, deliverer, emancipator. Whoa, emancipator. God can totally release the chains from off of you. Those things that keep you bound, that keep you on lockdown, and you can't seem to get away from it everywhere you go, it follows. Guess what? Jesus. Moving right along. Champion, knight in shining armor. A champion is your advocate, baby. He's the one that the goes between you and God, interceding for you, pulling for you. He's supporting you. He's working on your behalf. He is your champion. Yes. <laughs> All right. Knight in shining armor. He's the one that comes. He's your guardian angel, y'all. Oh, he will rescue you from the teeth of the lion. There is nothing out there that is stronger than the power of Jesus Christ. Nothing out there that can hinder him from delivering you except for your doubt and your choices. The choices you make to stay or to run, to call out on him. What are you doing? Are you succumbing to your oppressor? Are you giving in saying there is no way out? Jesus is your way out of everything, y'all. He is our way of escape. He is a friend in need. Yes, the friend in need. He is, he sticks closer than a brother. No matter who you depend on, when you need something, God can bring the help to you that you can't get to. God can make someone hear you that you, that you can't even holler loud enough for anybody to hear you. God can make somebody just take a notice of you and immediately discern you've got a problem and they're the ones that are supposed to rescue you. God will use people, but he's the power behind all the help you're getting. Good Samaritan. Yes, he will clean up all your wounds. He will put you back together again. He will mend you. Good Samaritan, a great example of that. Luke 10, 33. Read that story for yourself. Now, a perfect example of how much authority Jesus really has. He can make your enemies be at peace with you. They can be your greatest ally because God can change the spots of a leopard. But I want you to see how he changed the heart of Saul. Acts chapter 9. Let's go to that real quick. And then I'm, I'm, I'm about to close. Acts chapter 9, starting at verse one, let me tell a quick story. Saul was an oppressor of the Jews. You hear me, especially the Christians. He was an oppressor and he was the one arresting and, and abusing and, and oppressing and arresting and beating and, and, and getting folks killed. He was a real problem. Uh, I got to read it from the beginning. And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughters against the disciples of the Lord, went into the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus, to the synagogues, that if they found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus and suddenly there shone round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul. Why persecutest thou me? See, this is the thing about Jesus. Whatever anybody does to us, they're doing to him, good or bad. That's how intertwined we are with our Savior. Listen to this, five. And he said, who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. Now, I know most of us don't know what that means. It is hard for us to kick against the pricks. But what he's actually saying to him is, you're kicking and you're kicking and you're fighting and you're fighting me. You can't beat me, baby. This is a losing battle. So you need to quit the kicking. Now, verse six, and he trembled and astonished, said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, arise. Go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. Now, the point I'm making on that is this man was of high authority, y'all. This man was wreaking havoc in the people of God's lives. But guess what? Jesus. 
our knight in shining armor. Jesus, our rescuer. Jesus, our advocate. Do you hear what I'm saying? Jesus, the one and only, faithful, true and holy. He's a, a son of righteousness, worthy of the glory. Jesus Christ, the one, the and, one only. and only. Listen, y'all. When you have Jesus in your life, you have all the help you need. His name is more powerful than a bullet, believe it or not. Yes, his name is more powerful than a pit bull dog. His name is more powerful than the rapist. See, the thing is, even if a person takes your life, you're not dead. You're in the presence of God. However the enemy comes at you, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. The Lord can take the sting away from death. So there are some that die in the Lord. Yes, we all must go through that door. However we go through, no matter what, death, where is thy sting? Grave, where is thy victory? You have none because of God. Why? He takes us through the door pain-free. Our bodies may be wrecked, but guess what? We are free, free indeed. So remember who you serve. You serve a risen, not a dead one, a risen Savior. Remember that. And knowing who you serve will make all the difference in your daily, hourly battles in the natural and in the spirit realm. Knowing who your risen Savior is and what that means in your life will relax your nerves and keep you in perfect peace because you keep your mind stayed on him, not on the problem, not on the people, not on their words, not on their attitude, not on their actions, not on their threatenings, not on the what is, not on your fears. He will keep you in perfect peace when all hell is breaking loose all around you. You, you be like Jesus sleeping at the bottom of the boat, sleeping. Folks saying, what the heck is wrong with you? Don't you know we going through hell? You look up at, oh, you might be going through hell, but God's got me. There's nothing to fear. And they'll be scratching their heads. How come you're not tripping like the rest of us? Why? Because you know in whom you believe. So my question to you is, in whom do you believe? In what does your faith lie? Hmm. Yeah. Where have you stuck your faith? Where does it abide? And how does that enable you to function through life's many vicissitudes and challenges? You have to think about that. Because when you get everything in the right perspective and you get God in true focus, 2020 focus, baby. All the rest of it is blurred. All your problems are blurred. Hmm. All your challenges are blurred. You start growing numb to the stings of life. You start growing numb to the attacks of the enemy. Why? Because your faith is in God. Why? Because you have done what Psalms 46 says. Be still and know that I am God. God bless you.